Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Commodities and Stock Market Update video. And today we'll be doing some point reasons and levels as well as what's the most likely scenario price we'll be heading into later this week or natural gas, oil, gold, silver, US dollar, as well as QQ, S&P 500, Tesla, Nvidia, Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Meta. So we'll be doing analysis on all of them. And if you guys learn anything, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. And let's get started. So we'll be looking at natural gas, exactly the same spot as yesterday. No changes. As long as we hold above this $3 mark, there's still hope for bulls. So pretty much, uh, let me adjust this real quick. There we go. So yeah, it's pretty much, we want to hold about that level up because you can see the amount of times we have rejected when we were price was under it. So it's a strong resistance. Now we want to see it act strong support. We're over here. If we do break below this $3 range, we are back in this chop zone. So that's the last thing we want to see after a breakout above it. And currently we have already retraced over probably 60%. Let's see here. Yeah, over 65%. So even if we get a bounce here, next move is gonna favor the bears for a daily downtrend, depending on the size of that bounce. If it's a shallow bounce, then it's a daily bear flag. But if we get over a 50% retracement on that bounce, meaning 50% of this drop, then it can start favoring the bulls again. But now we don't have any of those data as yet because we don't, it hasn't even bounced yet. So, but uh, we will see how strong that bounce is once we get that going. So now, no clear direction. You can see very clear chop zone resistance right here. 3.13 resistance. $3 here is a support and it's just chopping in it. So, whichever way this range breaks, we'll know. Um, if we break bullish, then we know this is the, marking the bottom of the zone. If we break bearish here, then it's starting to look pretty bad for the bulls. And we're probably going to come down to test this 2.97 zone right here. You can see this is acting as support, 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 prior resistance, now acting as support. So if we break this the other level, we're coming back down here to 2.97. Let's look at UNG. So UNG is similar idea with net gas, same thing as yesterday. Um, natural gas has an inside bar, so UNG pretty much had the same thing. Broke above, came below, inside bar, still holding above 7.18. Same thing, key support above this prior zone, because if we fall back below that 7.18, you will come back down to that zone as well, which the prior. Away zone, so we don't want that as a bolt. And we'll see if bulls can continue to hold this bottom and pick above this top. So this is pretty much a sideways zone as well. 7.41 is a place I want to see bulls break above, and bulls want to hold 7.18. If they break it below this, then obviously natural gas broke below as well. We're probably coming back down to 6.9 level, which is this prior resistance, not which is also prior support. So we'll see if it bounces us a support there. And if that does happen, then we're looking at um, that equilibrium looking. If we do bounce, right, it's going to be a tight range depending on the size of the bounce. So we'll see if that forms up or not. But that would take months for that kind of tiny range to form, just like we had one back here. It's forever to those super tiny ranges you'll get oil here oil on the daily continuous daily uptrend so yesterday i talked about where as long as it's a daily uptrend intact we confirmed it on friday no signs of reflex also is bouncing off the 12 ema so as long as hourly trend is also intact no signs of reflex either we are testing some resistance which is this uh, $80. You can see right there, $80 zone resistance. A price is above it. So we're reacting to support, bounce off it four times. Resistance here, resistance here. You can see that all those upper wicks, those are resistance at the moment. The mini price kind of went above it. So let sellers bring it back down. And then sellers bring it back down over and over. $80 is going to be key resistance zone. See so if we can get over above it. 
tomorrow or not. If not, then maybe we'll get a daily hourly downtrend here that we can say potentially say this is marking the top of this bounce. If it does happen, if we get an hourly downtrend right here, then this is looking like a tiny range. Big move up, smaller move down, huge move gets smaller and smaller, and we could potentially form an equilibrium now. We'll see if um, the $80 zone marks an hourly uptrend, downtrend here, marking the top of that bounce. Gold is still going. It makes sense. Gold is a safe haven asset. And given the situation, the macro situation around the world, uh, we had a pretty good bounce here back above the very top zone here. Now we're testing exactly on 1962 resistance. And we'll see uh, if we move or not. No time changes yet. This is one straight move. So any pullbacks, we get a shallow pullback. Then it was looking like a bull, daily bull flag, but as of now, no signs of pullback yet. And yeah, no signs of pullback at this moment. So everything's still intact. I really have trying to intact as well. So bulls are looking good, except we just hit a resistance, but that's about it. Doesn't mean we can retest it. Doesn't mean we can't retest it tomorrow. We are still in striking distance. So, and we don't have an hourly downtrend yet, so we can't. It's a good chance that we may retest it again tomorrow. The US dollar. So that head and shoulders look is starting to get negated. You can see this is the left shoulder, this is the head, this is the right shoulder. So we're supposed to come down to here, the 105. And now it's uh, we had a bounce today. Went above yesterday's high. So daily higher low is set, meaning this low is higher than this prior pivot low. So if we do break above. Friday's high, 106.78. That's a daily uptrend confirmed. Um, the US market, stock market does not want to see the dollar keep going up. And same thing with metal bulls. Yeah, metal, as a metal bull, you don't want to see the dollar keep going up. So let's see if we bounce, this gets negated, and we come back below it. Then that would be a good sign for stock market and metal bulls. But for you dollar bulls, you definitely want to break above Friday high to continue that uh, to come up and test this 106.8, which is the left shoulders resistance right here. And also confirm that daily up and at the same time, some momentum rolling in. Silver, same thing with the dollar. Uh, sorry, same, same thing with gold. Just a little bit weaker, but obviously it bounces um, in terms of percentage wise, it's always larger than gold. We're coming up to this. $23.3 resistance, and we're back above this original sideways support, which is strong support. And it's kind of like a flush and then a V shape because of the macro environment. Same thing with the gold. As long as early uptrend is intact and no signs of red flags. Let's see here. We had a little pivot set here, so now we broke below that. So that is a hourly uptrend into a neutral trend. So now we'll see if the bears can confirm an hourly downtrend. All they have to do is break below 22.67. Then daily consolidation is on its way. Daily consolidation just means that um, second here. Daily consolidation just means that. The next candle is going to be below the prior candle. So today's candles, that's just going to be a daily call. Installation is on its way, just like we had one yesterday here. Yeah, so we may, we may top out here if we get that hourly downtrend confirming tomorrow, which we're very near it. You see, we just have to break below this candle's low, and that's the hourly downtrend confirmed. All right, let's move to the stock market. So, stock market, you had a Pretty red day today, and we looks like we're still tightening up. It's a very clear rejection from this um, zone on Thursday. Now we have broke below the 12 EMA, so that's a bad sign. But we're still holding above this structure. See this big structure here? Top of the zone is over here, right? And we pretty much bounce off of that level right there. So as long as we hold above that structure, 
and 361 level and bounce off that. That's a good sign, meaning buyers in this zone are still in the green. And this was the change of the move, and we just pulled back, even though it was a bigger pullback than bull wanted. Buyers in this zone are still currently green. So no signs of huge structural damage yet as of a rough flag. Um, but we are looking at a weekly higher low. So meaning every low on a weekly chart on the highs of these pivots are lower than prior week. But it's on the bear column, but we can say that bulls have enough room where they may can potentially shape up a weekly higher high. But that's no sign of that yet. We need to um, pretty much bounce where we currently are. Over here and we need to break above this downtrending resistance line for that to, for that to uh, happen so no signs of that yet uh, as long as we are below this downtrending resistance a weekly higher high is not going to happen so we have a clear resistance to to play off of and um, that needs to break before the bulls get to um maybe have a year-end run but we need to break this one first so we can do that. Look at SPY here. So SPY has a similar look. So we came back to retest this for uh, 429 zone, which is this structure right here. And we bounce off that. So that's a good sign, but also this structure as well. I can see that. That doesn't mean it's game over for the bears. In fact, it's still favoring the bears at the moment because of um, this daily uptrend confirming right there, broke above, lacking follow through, and then we broke below the pivot. So now SPY is in a daily neutral trend. It's still definitely favoring the bears at the moment. You can see even on the hourly, the hourly downtrend. And all we did was we just hit that level at the last hour and bounced that that's it. Doesn't mean that uh, bulls are out of the woods or anything yet. This tomorrow can just another candle down where we're then we broke that support, right? So what you want to do tomorrow is to see if this support can hold. Let's say tomorrow we flush, get a double bottom, bounce, then there's a good chance that you can add there and set your stop loss. Just right below that support. Ideally, we make a higher low, meaning just slightly above today's low, and then bounce. But um, deal scenario for bulls. I think just follow the uh, hourly downtrend. So hourly 12 EMA is your guide. It's still looking line. It's currently rejecting um, price. You can see all these upper wicks the whole day, as well as the hourly downtrend is intact. If those two are intact, bulls are not bouncing anywhere. Let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla had earnings today, and it almost looks like someone new that they're going to miss earnings. So today dumped before the earnings, but, um, but we're currently slightly green actually after the earnings came out. I guess it wasn't as bad as they expected, but they did miss. So we're up 2.3%. So that looks, that's pretty good. And pretty much we actually bounce off of this. Uh, see that teal looking line, which is the uptrending support that we were talking about for a very long time around Two three six. Let's take a look on a daily chart to see if it matches it. Two three six, right there. Yep. See the teal looking line right there. So I've been talking about this tiny range. See, see all those bounces off the teal looking line. Big move up, big move down. It just gets tighter. Each move is smaller than the prior move, and then we hit that support zone again, and then bounce off of it. So it's perfect support line. And currently, we are still under the resistance line, of course. This mirror looking down, trending resistance. We're not. We're still tightening up, pretty much. So, no surprises here. As long as we trade within these two zones, we know where Tesla is going to be trading. Yeah, bounce off of it exactly, and yeah, just bouncing within these two zones. All right, Nvidia. Let's see here, Nvidia. Big red day that looks like that head and shoulders that I talked about is playing out. So 
left shoulder, head, right shoulder. I'm actually surprised that the size of this drop, we had just four days to give it all back. We took us like 10, 10 days, but uh, this pretty significant drop for, but yeah, definitely. Let's see, 11%. Yeah, it's quite a bit. Doesn't mean we're gonna come from the head and shoulders. We still need to break this neckline here. And they need to break this pivot first and then this pivot to confirm a head and shoulders pattern. But sometimes they break it a little bit on purpose and then we just bounce back right away on the V-shape. But uh, let's see how many percentages we are away from that. Another 4% drop from Nvidia, huh? I would say we need a slight bounce like uh, like this. Let's say it forms a daily bear flag and then goes lower, then there's a good chance. If we get a very shallow bounce, like a 32% retracement bounce, shallow, and then they're able to bring it lower, confirming a bear flag, then that head and shoulders probably will increase even more that we may break the neckline. Uh, there's quite a bit of support down here, so we don't want it to break through this. Otherwise, it's going to start going into the gap. So that's the last thing the bulls want to see. So it's going to be a little bit tough unless some macro stuff happens and this thing just, you know, goes with the market. But at the moment, it's going to be a bit tough for bears to really push it through it in one go from this from all the way here to down here it's going to be like 15 or close to 20 percent right without any catalyst so they probably need a little bit of break form a little bit of a bear flag on a daily before they can potentially bring it down so early downtrend is your guide no signs of bounce yet on the hourly you can see very clear early downtrend so no fake outs here and it doesn't get over the 12 ema if you're looking line it's not going anywhere and Apple. Same thing as yesterday, another inside bar, just testing this uptrending support right there. So and this is the downtrending. So as long as Apple trades within here, there's a little bit of a fake out here, but as long as Apple trades within the zone, it's also just trending up as well. So I need to get over that 177. Otherwise, not going anywhere. But if we can cut it some slack, market was pretty red today. So Apple is only down 0.74%. So if Apple continues to bounce off of these levels, which is that mirror looking line, then we may get a kind of like a falling wedge breakout here. We'll see if they can do that. Down here, looking. Looks like a bullish reaction to Netflix's earnings uh, after hours for Amazon there. Netflix is up 10% from this earnings report, but Amazon broke below 129, but still, let's see, it's above its pivot. The uptrend confirmed. One straight move down, still above its pivot. So, what I want to see is Amazon hold above pretty much exactly where we bounced today because of this zone right there. You can see all these upper wicks, which was clear prior resistance, now acting as support. So so we want to bounce off of this structure. Because if we start coming down here into the structure, everybody who bought it here is going to be in the red. And that's going to be uh, a big win for the bears because they are starting to damage the structure of the charts. We go back more. Google here. Google just going sideways. No big deal. Going sideways at the top of 52 highs is the most ideal for bulls. Because after a significant move, consolidation at the top of its range, 52 high range, is the most ideal scenario. You can just pull things off, cool the RSI off, cool all indicators off, and then potentially, you know, let's say QQ decides to break out of that downtrending resistance. Next thing you know, Google has a fuel now to go higher after consolidating at its 52 high. So it's looking good. As long as Google holds above the teal looking line on the daily chart, it's full bull control. And give me a second here. All right, Microsoft. So Microsoft, very clear resistance here. 335. You can see it's a double top there as well. 
and it's actually outperforming in the market today as well, it's down 0.59%, while QQQ is down over 1.3%. So as well as it's holding above its uh, higher high range. So it's a good sign. Let's take a look here. Still in bull flag. Yeah, actually it's still in bull flag. So the idea of a bull flag is shallow retracement. So that's a good sign. Microsoft is also above its teal looking line, which is a 12 EMA. Bounced off of it a couple of times already. But we're still in this down draining resistance. So we got over it slightly, but we just can't get over that 335. What I want to see is potentially, let's say we get a bounce tomorrow on QQQ. You know, like we get a half a percent or or 1%. I want to see Microsoft be able to close above this 335 level. That would be the most ideal for the bulls. And for the bears, I always see another rejection from this downtrending resistance line and break below the teal looking line structure, go lower to retest this 325 level of support. And the hourly charts is, yeah, just sideways here. See very clear 335 resistance. That's some bouncing off of it here as well. All right, let's look at meta. Meta here, let's see. Looking like it's just chopping around. It's... So after a significant move up, it has a slight pullback and then it just going sideways. 2.17%. Still above the 12 EMA. So as long as Meta doesn't go below the teal looking line, bulls are in control. But, uh, because you can see the amount of times we bounce out of that teal looking line over here. And also rejection as well over here. It's very choppy. It's hard to see here, but you can see on this downtrending, when we're dropping, you've never gone over it. Certain times you can use it as um, support, certain times you can't. So right now it's a clear support. So you bounce off of there, bounce off of there again, bounce off of there again three times. And we will see if that level holds. It could just be forming um, sideways zone before another breakout. Not depending on the macro, of course, and QQQ itself overall in the markets. If we do come down, which we already did test this once, 313 support. Very clear resistance here, not acting as support. So we'll see if um, it does break that, and we'll see if we can pull that support again and bounce off it above for meta bulls. Early trend is. A slight, slight hourly downtrend here because we confirmed it broke below today's low. But uh, it's lacking follow through so far after hours because of uh, Netflix bullish reaction to earnings. And so everyone bounced after hours. So it bounces pretty much here today. It's just an hourly downtrend, lacking follow through. That'd be a good sign for the bulls. We'll probably retest this 325 if that happens. All right, that's all I got for you guys. And take care. Make sure to set your stop losses. And yeah, don't um, forget those trends. Keep your trend is always your guide and your friend. If you guys learn anything, feel free to subscribe, like, and share, or support the channel. And I will see you guys tomorrow.